What's up, YouTube? I'm back. I got the injection pump timing right. And now we're going to adjust the valves. So pretty much what you got to do is get it at top dead center. And if you're not sure how, you can watch the last video. Pretty much there's a mark on the flywheel. So once you have it at top dead center for cylinder number one, you can tell because the tappets will be ripped will be relatively flat on the top end. I can't get the camera down, but you can see like cylinder number two, one of the tappets is sticking out and one is actually depressing the valve. So top dead center number one, they'll be relatively flat across the top. If we look in the green book or the Volvo service manual, this is section two D24 turbo diesel service manual. You will see that for a cold engine, if you're checking your clearances, they want it to be between 0.15 to 0.25 millimeters on the intake cold and 0.35 to 0.45 on the exhaust cold. Where they actually want them to be, to be at spec, is intake is 0.20, exhaust is 0.40. So pretty much we're gonna measure them see where they're at, and if they're close, we'll leave them. If they're not close, we will try to get as close to that spec as possible. I think I'm just gonna try to get to, as close as that, to that as I can on all of them. These are the tools you will need. This is to remove the shim, and it is Volvo part number 5195. This is to depress the valves, and it's Volvo 5196. You'll also need feeler gauges. These ones are in pretty good shape, but unfortunately they um, only go to, I think 16 or 15 is the maximum width. And when we're checking the exhaust, we need to get up into the 30s and 40s. So I have this set, it's a little bit rusty, but it should do uh, to measure the larger gaps. So if you look in the manual, it tells you um, which valves are for which, so you can see for cylinders um, one, two, and three, it's exhaust first, then intake, exhaust, intake. After cylinder number three, it's intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. It would be obvious once you started because the clearances would be much bigger, um, but you just want to check and make sure you're doing the right thing. So the clearances tend to get smaller over time. I would think the opposite as the tappets wear down. I'm not actually sure why they get smaller. Maybe somebody can comment. It could be because the valve seat in the engine wears down so it allows more travel upwards. So we're doing exhaust number one. So I'm going to get my feeler gauge. I have it at 0.30 because I know I'm going to be a little bit tighter. And you kind of have to get a feel for how to put these the feeler gauges in, no pun intended, because it's kind of hard to tell um, what the correct measurement should be. So the .30, it's hard because there's so little uh, clearance to get it in, but you can tell it's it goes in, but it's very stiff. So if we go down to a .25, you can see it kind of slides in and out a little bit easier. And what you want is just a little bit of drag. A little bit of drag means that the clearance is actually what the feeler gauge says it is, in this case, 0.25. So that's too small. We need it to be 0.1 millimeters, or 0.15 millimeters larger. So we figured out we need to um, decrease the width of the shim the clearance on exhaust valve number one is 0.25. It should be 0.14, which means we need 0.15 millimeters larger clearance, which means we need to put a smaller shim in there. This can get a little bit confusing. You just Sometimes you just gotta make notes and kinda do the math so that you don't end up going larger just because, I don't know, I get confused. So what we need to do is rotate the engine one quarter turn clockwise so that we can put in the tappet tool to depress the tappet. So 
and the tool goes in like this between the lobes and then you just pull it back and I don't know if you could tell but what it did was it just pushed those tappets down so that the shims can be removed. So with the first tool in then you get these pincers which grab the valve shim. There's little notches where the valve shim is seated and on each side you get the pincer tool in the notches and then you just kind of jiggle the shim and it'll come out. I use a magnet tool to get it just so I don't scratch anything up and it's just a little bit easier. So if you look at the bottom of the shim it's marked 340 that means 3.40 millimeters we need to go 0.15 millimeters smaller so we need a 3.25 so the problem that I'm having is that a 0.35 millimeter shim is too stiff to effectively kind of turn that corner and get under the um, the camshaft here so what I've done is just stacked up a 20, a 15, and a 4, which is 39. That's the closest I can get to 40. And because they're all a little bit more flexible, I can actually slip them all in there. And you can see there's some resistance. It, so it's close to 40. I mean, it's close enough. I'm happy with it. So right now we're doing the clearance on cylinder number one intake valve. I just kind of want to illustrate how to use the feeler gauges and uh, just sort of what it's like. So right now I'm looking for 0.20 millimeters. So if I put a 0.20 in there, it kind of starts to feel like it goes in, but then it stops. If I put an 18 millimeter in there, see it slides in. So now I know, okay, my clearance is somewhere around 18. Unfortunately, these thinner feeler gauges, um, I think are prioritized for inches. So the millimeters, you know, it's not an even number. It's not just 18, it's 1.78, but we can just say that's 18. So you can see here, I just made a note. I said intake number one is 0.18. It should be 0 0.20. So the difference is negative 0 0.02. Now I don't have a shim that small. The smallest I have is 0 0.05 difference. So because the shims um, are located to wear over time, what I'm going to try to do is increase the clearance by 0 0.05 and take another measurement and see where I'm at and probably I'll stick with that. So now I have a 0 0.009 which is a 0.223 which is a, a 0.23 let's say it's actually 0.229 so that's 0 0.03 millimeters larger than I want but it fits nice and snug and like I said I'd rather be a little bit larger so that as it wears down, the valve will still be in spec. Now, if this isn't a good idea, somebody can, can correct me. I don't have a whole lot of experience adjusting valves, but this just kind of seemed like a common sense. I'd rather be 0.3, I'd rather be 0 0.03 millimeters too large than 0 0.02 millimeters too small. So that's how you um, check the clearances and remove the shims and uh, replace them with the, with the appropriate size and then measure what you've done just to make sure. So you want to start with cylinder number one and the order you want to follow is one, five, three, six, two, four. And um, I guess I could scan this and put it up just in case someone doesn't have it. It pretty much just shows what I just demonstrated but it has a little more detail. Um, so you can see we're checking the clearances. This is telling you what's exhaust, what's intake. You want to turn the engine a quarter turn before you depress the tappets. You can see the tool. Uh, there's the, rem the uh, to remove it. And then you're supposed to actually measure the old shim with a micrometer. I'm not sure that's necessary. Maybe in a motor that's really worn, you want to actually check the shim and see if it is what it says it is. I didn't do that and it's worked out okay. And then you put your new shim in and you just put some oil on it. Um, I used assembly lube. It's just, um, here you go, cam assembly lube. It's pretty easy to find at any auto parts store. And then you just recheck it. So, hope that was helpful.